Hello everyone, Dripsauce here. Today I'm gonna be showing you proof as to why Dragon Ball GT, the games and the movies are canon and can function as separate timelines or worlds alongside the main continuity without causing any contradiction. So let's get straight into it. It's stated that Toyotaru is the one who draws the Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 manga. Here's a message from Akira Toriyama himself. Fu is basically from Dragon Ball Online, which is a game Toriyama made himself. Kronoa, the Time Kaioshin, as well as Toa and Mira are mentioned in Dragon Ball Online as well. As well as Timebreaker Bardock, which implies that Heroes characters are here as well. Members of Frieza's army recognize Trunks as a Time Patroller. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is stated by Toriyama to contain things that haven't been explained in the manga which would imply that there are things in the games which explain the backstory behind certain things that haven't been explained in the main continuity or the manga. It's basically a licensed game that Toriyama is aware of. Kakarot is basically an expanded version of the main continuity that explains things that the main continuity did not. It is basically stated to be based off of the actual anime and manga. Dragon Ball Reborn as Yamcha was also supervised by Akira Toriyama himself. It even references Dokkan, which is insane. In Dragon Ball Fusions, Toa and Mira are actually present and shown in the game. Dragon Ball Super and Reborn as Yamcha have had a crossover inside of Dragon Ball Fusion. As I mentioned earlier, in Reborn as Yamcha, they also talk about Dragon Ball Dokkan, which is insane. Dokkan crosses over with Dragon Ball Heroes. And the thing about crossovers in Dragon Ball is that it's not just crossing over, they're actually fusing the verses into one, as it's stated here. Dragon Ball Fusion also crosses over with Dragon Ball Heroes, as it's stated here. Goku Black also invades Dragon Ball Fusions as he's searching for something that will give him the power to control all of the timelines and worlds and being able to travel to anyone he wants. It's also stated here that there's fusion of the Dragon Ball worlds, everything is fused, etc. Time and dimension, space fused together. Trunks from Dragon Ball Xenoverse joins Dragon Ball Heroes to help Goku and Vegeta. The demon Meki Kabula was mentioned in Dragon Ball Online and Xenoverse, but he wasn't shown. So they showed him in Dragon Ball Heroes, which is connected to those both um, timelines, so it doesn't really matter. Not only was the Xenoverse manga written by Toyotaru, but Toriyama actually supervised and was aware of everything being created within Xenoverse, and he approved multiple things within the game itself. He also made some of the mangas as well. As you can see, Akira Toriyama. Dragon Ball Online is also a game created by Akira Toriyama. Gogeta from the Broly movie was stated to come straight from the actual Broly movie, which is canon to the anime. There are stated to be new playable characters that come straight from the movie itself. If you look at this right here, basically explains that they're from the movie and the anime. Basically explaining everything right here. There's a lot of source material that you can read for Dragon Ball that basically confirms a lot of shit. So it basically confirms the characters from the anime are in the game as well. As you can see in all this material, basically confirms that Kefla is there. Jiren is there as well. Even Zamasu is there. Android 17 is there, etc. Characters from the Tournament of Power are there. You know, gods are there as well. As you can see within all this material. Hit is also there as well. Kronoa basically implied that any Beerus from any timeline can destroy the Time Nest, which would include the one from Dragon Ball Super. Dragon Ball Breakers, the new game, is also stated to be in the same world as Dr Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, as well as Xenoverse 2 Trunks even being there. Here are some really good arguments you could use to make Xenoverse canon, even though we can already address it as canon. These are some really good arguments I found that you can use to address Xenoverse as canon. You can pause to read them. So these basically prove that Xenoverse can fit into the canon cosmology or story. 
you can read all of this. It basically proves that Akira Toriyama was involved with Dragon Ball GT, the character design and story, etc. So all these basically prove that Dragon Ball GT is also canon. Toriyama was involved in it somewhat and he is aware of it. He does take it as a valid, you know, source material. He regards it as a separate timeline that you can choose to be the end of the story if you want as it's stated here. GT is even stated in Dragon Ball Xenoverse to be a separate timeline from the main continuity. And Dragon Ball Online is literally stated to be in a world 250 years after the current manga. This guidebook basically implies that Buu Saga Vegito and Fusion Reborn Gogeta would be evenly matched. Fusion Reborn also shows every villain from every other movie apart from um, Bio Broly which we do not speak about which basically proves that Fusion Reborn Gogeta is above all the movie villains which would prove that Buu Bu Saga Vegito is above them as well since he's implied to be equal to Fusion Reborn Gogeta. Janemba is also stated to be the second strongest villain in the movies and Gogeta easily destroyed them and since Gogeta is relative to Vegito which is implied in the guidebook and that would mean that anime Busaga Vegito would scale above all the movie villains. Here are some statements of Boo in the anime being the strongest being ever up to that point in the series which will be relevant later on. So look at the statements right here and base Vegeta is partially attached from him literally it's stated right here also stated here um, Goku and his friends return so basically Kid Buu scales above Vegito and they're able to fight Kid Buu in base so that would just scale them above Kid Buu that would scale them above Vegito, which would scale them above all the movie characters since Vegito scales to movie Gogeta. So base Goku and Vegeta at this point scale above all the movie villains. Cooler actually makes an appearance in GT, which means GT is more closely connected to the movies, and that would just solidify our scaling. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot uses scenes from the anime, which further confirms its canon. Akira Toriyama himself designed the characters from Dragon Ball Legends, as you can see in the scans right here. Basically, he designed all the characters from Dragon Ball Legends, the new ones. And the Dragon Ball Heroes game also crosses over with the Broly movie. Android 21 is Dr. Zero's wife. And just some further shit that confirms that Kid Buu is the strongest. Basically, GT is also relevant to this. Android 21 is also in Dragon Ball Xenoverse, as it's stated here. She's also in Dokkan, shown here in Fighters as well. As you can see in the scan right here, it talks about her being in Fighters. Android 21 is also in Dragon Ball Fighters, stated here. It's a pleasure to meet you, blah, blah, blah. So, they're all co connected. They're all literally connected, bro. So, Majin Buu literally ate Babidi in Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi. And here he is as a combined character. He's even shown in Dragon Ball Online. Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta also. Versus Battles Wiki even talks about crossovers and they say it's pretty usable especially if they're made by the same authors or companies and if it is consistent and the cosmologies are similar etc which we have been able to establish multiple times and there's even more establishment coming forth so this basically is more evidence you need. Toribot is basically Zeno on steroids. He's the god of the entire Dragon Ball verse. They also mentioned a God Fusion Goku movie. Yet again, another Dokkan and Xenoverse crossover. There's a lot of these crossovers. We have Dragon Ball Fusions right here. 
God Brawley from the um, Dragon Ball Heroes also makes an appearance in Dragon Ball Xenoverse. It's the same God Brawley from the God Fusion Goku movie. These characters are just casually flying throughout timelines and worlds, transcending time and space and fighting themselves. Dragon Ball Dokkan basically mentions events from the anime, Dragon Ball Heroes, etc. So you can basically see all of this, it basically mentions everything. So yeah, Dragon Ball Dokkan is definitely canon as well. All of them are just basically canon. Dragon Ball Legends even crosses over with Super. Specifically the new superhero movie and I proved that crossovers are included with the fact that they are fusing the verses literally into one. Dragon Ball Super and Zeno Goku are here fighting together as it's shown here. Your avatar basically fought a stronger avatar from Dragon Ball Xenoverse who scales above Demigur's true form when he absorbed Toki Toki. Then he fought Mira's final form, then he got stronger since and was so strong he was as strong as base Goku from the DLC 6. Here is some more evidence that base Goku and Vegeta currently scale above all of the movie villains as well as Kid Buu himself scaling above all of them. Further substantiation that Kid Buu is the strongest version of Buu in the anime. Even Akira Toriyama states it. Here is another statement here. Much more statements here implying that literally stated here. Here again stated, literally stated here again, stated here again, and Goku in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is able to fight him in base. Even stated they're the top three in the multi in the universe at that point. Even he stated right here, stated here again much more um, confirmation about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Uh, as you can see, base Goku is fighting Kid Buu, which means he scales above all of the movie villains in base. As you can see, base Goku is basically tagging Kid Buu. As you can see right here, basically tanking attacks from Kid Buu. As it stated here, going head to head with Kid Buu. So, the villainous enemies are a much stronger version of the enemies that are being controlled and given power by Toa. They are much stronger than they are usually, as it stated here from Toa. Got rid of the source of the villainous enemies right here. It is stated that their power is greatly multiplied and their true power is brought out. Pause and read this. As you can see, he takes down Goku. Using this, Mr. Satan was able to beat Mastered Super Saiyan Goku. And it's from the Cell Saga. Even if we lowball, this evil amp is at least a 6 billion times boost to your current power level. As you can see here. Just pause and look at all of this so you can understand. Also, pause and read this explanation right here. Pause. Mira was basically going to, like, he basically gathered all the energy of every villainous um, energy infected villain in every timeline that he was able to affect. And he gathered the energy that was ex expunged from the fights with the warriors as well. And he basically became extremely broken and absorbed all that power into himself. You can read the basic explanation right here. Pause. The villainous enemies themselves can call allies from different timelines and there are infinite amount of timelines. Which means that Mira may have gathered the energy of villainous enemies from infinite amount of timelines. Base Goku gets rid of him, but the villainous villains remain. 
now super villainous enemies came and even these guys, the weakest one of them, are stronger than Mira. As shown here, Mira is a level 100 and this is a level 110. And this is a super villainous Mira. So basically, super villainous Mira has the power of infinite super villainous enemies from different timelines. The infinite timelines plus the power produced during their fight against the super villainous enemies talking about goku and vegeta in context and goku and vegeta can still beat him in their base forms meaning that base goku and vegeta in dragon ball z the buu saga at the end of the buu saga are one of the strongest people in dragon ball z universe period which is broken because it's not even in dragon ball super yet so basically even Z Goku is already packing up probably even Zeno Goku. So I don't know. Even the cosmology probably even transcends them, so that explains much. So guys. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe. If you disagree, my Discord server will be in the in the comment section. Probably in the description below. Please do not start any debate wars in my comment sections. I will delete your comments, bro. Like, shit like that just pisses me off if you can't just listen to simple instructions. So, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.